All right. Now, let's get to the meat of the episode. Liam, once again, the regular season is right around the corner. Technically, it's already started because there's been two games played over in Europe between the Predators and the Sharks. And at the time of recording, the Predators and Sharks game, the second one, ended probably roughly 10 minutes ago. Predators are 2-0, and first in the league. But... Uh, I don't think that's going to stand. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. We're going to start over in the West and the Central, and we're going to go based on the order of which teams finished last year, one to one through eight, or well, actually not or, because Seattle's the 32nd team now. I, I got so used to there being 30 and 31 teams. So let's start off with Colorado, the reigning and defending Stanley Cup champions. Uh, I still can't believe uh, Jack Johnson is a Stanley Cup champion. I, I'm still shell-shocked about that, but let's look at a couple things that happened. They did lose Darcy Kemper, and they got Alexander Georgiev. In my opinion, that's a downgrade. They did lose Nazem Kadri, which I think that's going to be... It's a big loss, but it's not like a catastrophic loss because they have a very well built oiled machine over there i at the end of the day excuse me at the end of the day i still see them running away with this division what are your thoughts on them yeah for colorado again you know i'm with you i think they definitely downgraded going from kemper to georgiev and if you watch the first couple of opportunities uh that georgiev had in the preseason um you know he was not impressive Uh, i think his save percentage was sub 700 um, so Ooh. that worries me. Certainly no Kadri either. I don't know how, you know, their top six is necessarily going to gel, you know, because you want to keep your top six and, you know, your top four defensemen pretty much intact after winning a Stanley cup. And they didn't do that. And they didn't keep their goaltending intact. And you're kind of, you know, messing with two backups now, uh, in Pavel Franco and Alexander Georgiev, it's definitely a risk and shades. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that defending Stanley Cup champions don't win the Central Division. I have a different team winning the Central. I can get to that right now uh, or I can get to it a little bit later, but up to you. Uh, I just want to, before we get to that, I I forgot that they also lost Andre Burakovsky to Seattle, if I remember correctly. He was a guy that was on that team for a couple of years that actually had very good productivity. So, it's a, it's amazing. They're a weird one because they seemingly had a crap ton of cap space. And then after the fact, it just looked like they didn't really have anywhere near as much as it once seemed. Yeah. Which, yeah. So, hey, that's NHL salary cap. But side note, the salary cap did go up another million. So now it, is it at 82 and a half or 83 and a half? Um, I believe it's at 83 and a half, um, but I, I could be wrong on that. I don't I don't know why I just asked you that. I literally have cap friendly open. God, Jesus Christ, Mike, use your fucking brain. <laughs> You're asking the guy who has who's on his phone. Yeah, use your use your fucking brain, Mike. It's 82 and a half. 82 and a half. Okay. I got okay. you. Jesus Christ. Dude, I'm telling but you. I, I told you I was tired before we started recording this. <laughs> Full disclosure, everybody. Shades did tell me that. Um, but real quick. Who do you think I have won in the Central? So if it's not Colorado, who do you think I won in the Central? Well, it's got to be – it's between literally two teams. It's between either the Wild, who we're going to talk about next, or the Blues, because those are literally the only two options. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think the Blues are going to are your choice because the Wild have so much in dead cap space. So yes, let's talk about are, the blues are my choice. Yes. Okay. But we'll I'm talk actually, about the wild. Yeah. We'll talk about the wild first. So the wild, when I was going through this, like before I started making notes and stuff, and I looked at the standings from last season, I w- literally, I was shocked because I forgot just how well the wild did last year. I was fully ready to go, man, I think I have a hot take of the, of the wild missing the playoffs. And then I'm just like, then I looked at the standings from last season and went, Oh shit. That's right. They did do that good last year. And they still have a 
pretty much their entire team intact from last year. So I do have them making the playoffs this year. And, but I do have them slipping to number three and not number two this year. Cause they look at their, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say for me, uh, I have them slipping too. I have them as a wild card team. I don't have them in the top three in the central. I have St. Louis number one. I have Colorado number two. Uh, and my third team in the central, everybody's sleeping on them. But Nashville. you know what? They they re yeah they re sign their top goal scorer in Philip Forsberg. You have a Vesna candidate every year in UC Saros. Oh, and you have a guy Roman Yossi who puts up a hundred points from the back end and is a number one defenseman, consistent Norris Trophy candidate. So I can't take anything away from Nashville, and I just think Minnesota. I mean, they traded away Kevin Fiala. That really turned me off, trading away Kevin Fiala to the Los Angeles Kings. He mm. he was their dynamo. He was their engine. And now you're going to back up a 37-year-old Marc-Andre Fleury after trading away Cam Talbot, you know, to go and get you into the playoffs. I mean, I think they'll make the postseason, but I think in Central they're going to have a little bit of a rough time. I really do. And I don't think that's a hot take. And too much dead cap space, too, like you said. Yeah, I mean – Look, I think Ryan Hartman's 38 goal season or whatever it was a season ago was an anomaly. I think he could put up 20 again, but I don't see him putting up that much. This team is really going to go as far as Flurry and Caprice all take them. That's right. And I don't think Flurry is going to be able to take them to um, second or third in the central, never mind the central division uh, title. I just think he's a little bit over the hill at this point. I think last year just kind of showed us when he was unable to take the reins away from Cam Talbot, you know, come to playoffs. And there was still a question on who they were going to start. That's kind of when I was like, I don't know how much faith the Wild organization have in him. Of course, they go on to trade Talbot and re-sign Flurry, But I just don't know how somebody who is aging like that uh, is going to help you win a Stanley Cup at this point. I just don't. I agree. So you got them finishing in a wild card, so fourth and – I do. You got the Blues one, and now we – I mean, we basically touched on the Blues. Uh, You have them winning the division. I have them finishing second because I have Nashville finishing third. We'll get to Nashville in a second. But, like, for me, St. Louis, I mean, like, they still kind of have the same team from when they won the Cup. They did lose a couple pieces. I mean, Perron, they lost Perron, who was really good get for them. Well, uh, uh, you know, he was a really good player for them for a long time. Bennington, I mean, he's kind of a wild card to me, but the Blues just have such a solid team, both on defense and up front, that I just I can't see them slipping to a wild card spot. Absolutely, Shades. And there's one stat that I love to tell people when, um, you know, putting praise on the St. Louis Blues name, and it's this. There are only two teams – in the Stanley Cup playoffs to beat the Colorado Avalanche. One was the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the other was the St. Louis Blues, and they both did it two times. If that doesn't tell you where they stand, I don't know what does. They are a very solid, well-put-together team, and yeah, they lost Willie Husso, and yeah, Jordan Bennington is a wild card, but I think they'll be able to pull it out. I'm more confident at this point in the St. Louis Blues goaltending than I am in the Avs goaltending, and that is why I have them winning the division over Colorado. It's a solid point. It's a solid point. So we'll get that's to that. That's saying something. That yeah. I have more faith in Bennington than I do Georgiev. That's that's saying something. But yeah, yeah. that's uh you you know my thoughts on Georgiev. I won't get into that again until later. So we move <laughs> on to the team that finished fourth last year, the Dallas Stars. Personally, I have them slipping out of a playoff spot because I think they overachieved last year as much as i love jason robertson who i actually thank god i picked him in fantasy when i did last year as a side note but they do have that they do have some really good defensemen in because heiskanen and lindell especially Suter at a three and 3.6 mil cap hit is still you're getting your bang for your buck there with him because he's still solid the main question going to be with them is can ottinger perform at that high level when their offense is still subpar goal scoring wise. Yeah. yeah, And I'm also sorry because there was a truck that was making a shit ton of noise. I'm sorry if that came across. (laughs) Didn't come across on my end, but I was just going to address the offense. You know, the offense took a significant tumble 
uh, from, of course, the year that they went to the Stanley Cup final against the Lightning in the bubble. I mean, Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan just look like shadows of their of their former selves. And if it wasn't for young guys like Rope Hintz and Jason Robertson that, you know, put in that youth a little bit and bring that energy, I think that they would be, you know, back towards the bottom of the central. But like you said, they still have a very good defensive core. I like Lundqvist. I like uh, Suter, Lindell as well. And, of course, Heiskanen, like you mentioned. I think Ottinger's good. But I think a lot of people are, you know, putting a lot of pressure on Jake Ottinger based off of what he did in the round one series against Calgary last year. If you look at his regular season. Yeah, you have to temper a little expectations. Bit pedestrian. Exactly. So Because you got to remember, I, he's only 23 right now. That's right. And I will wrap it up talking about Dallas with this. The Dallas Stars will only go as far as Jake Ottinger will take them. And that's that. And that is going to be to – fifth place in the central for me outside of the playoffs. I have them in the same spot. Okay. And like moving on to the predators fifth, I have them jumping the stars and getting a wild card spot in the central, because like you said earlier, they re-signed Philip Forsberg. They have literally a Vesna Vesna caliber goalie, UC Soros in net. Uh, They're Roman Yossi literally was a Norris finalist last year. And he's only 32, so he still has very a very high level of hockey left in him for at least two more years. They added Ryan McDonough for nothing. Ekholm is still solid. A rising young defenseman in Dante Fabro. And don't forget, they have Jeremy Lauzon. I liked their defense core before the, the McDonough trade. Now the question is going to become for them, can their offense keep it up? Can Duchesne keep his head on right can Johansson produce enough? Can Granlin produce at a higher clip? Nita Ryder was a good pickup for them. And can some of the young guys like Trennan and Tolvanen and Tomasino, and especially Jano too, can they take steps forward? That's going to be the real key for them. Yeah, Shade, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, again, I was going to say that the Predators go as far as their young guys take them. Tanner Janot is the wild card for me. I mean, he was so good last year uh, in his rookie season. And uh, look, the Preds, they have the defense. They have the goaltending. They have the system to make it work. Can they score enough goals? So it's going to be on the young guys, and it's going to be on the two veterans, Ryan Johansson and Matt Duchesne, two players who had nice bounce back years. If they can just, you know, just find their stride and, you know, just be a nice compliment to the young guys. I think Nashville can really – they can get as far as second place in the Central, in my opinion. They're 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 really good, and they're slept on by a lot of fans around the NHL. So, personally, I'm glad you're not one of them. You know. No, the only – they I mean, their offense or their team took a tumble in, like, the second half of the season, and the only reason they made the playoffs last year with how they were playing was pretty much because of how injured Vegas got. Right. So, yeah, but I honestly, I think that their second half of the season or whatever the span was, was kind of an anomaly, but I think they're going to bounce back and be better this year and finish fourth in the central. So real quick to touch on the jets. Yes. They still have Blake Wheeler, Shifley, Connor Ehlers, which in my opinion, I would fucking love if those four guys were in my top six, but Their second center spot is still a major question mark. That dressing room is just awful. I'm sorry. I uh, have a little bit of a microphone issue. My AirPods died. You're talking about Winnipeg, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I heard bad. I heard bad locker room and I was like, okay, you can only be talking about one team. Uh, And that's the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, Hey, look, it's Paul Maurice left in the middle of the year last year. He did it for a reason. And that was very suspect. Pierre Luc Dubois is not, uh, uh, he's not a model teammate, I guess you could say. Mark Shifley, you know, there's certainly questions about how much of a leader he is. They stripped the captain C away from Blake Wheeler. I mean, it's it's a tumultuous environment in Winnipeg like that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like I said, Hellebuck is good, but I just, I, I just, I can't see him carrying the Jets above sixth place in the Central this year. Yeah, neither can I, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I think the yeah, sixth, seventh in the Central, I think, is about right as to where they end up. You know, you can't really t- – it's really tough for teams to work past a bad locker room environment, and Winnipeg has not been able to do that the last couple of years, despite having a pretty solid roster. I mean, 
you know, they were pretty well put together, you know, going back even three, four years ago. And I, I predicted them to make the playoffs last year. And again, they didn't even get close to that mark. So. Yeah. And that's really all that needs to be said about Winnipeg. So they finished sixth last year. I got them sixth again, and you have them sixth slash seventh. And then we, and then we, Oh God. And then we have the Blackhawks and the Coyotes. This is all that needs to be said about the Blackhawks. They're in full on tear it down. Start from the beginning, just burn it all down, which is exactly why I have, I'm going to make a bold prediction here and say that they finish eighth. (laughs) Really? Yes. Okay. They finished last in the central. Um, yes. Yeah, it's tough for me. I can't believe I'm sitting here right now and I have to distinguish which team is worse, the Arizona Coyotes or the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, and the Blackhawks still have Patty Kane and Jonathan Tays and Seth Jones on the roster. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Chicago is going to end up seventh. I just think Arizona is just that bad. Um, but again, it wouldn't surprise me. You can really flip flop them, but if I had a gun to my head, I would take uh, Chicago seven. Uh, Arizona eight, Winnipeg six. And yeah, just to put a bow on uh, the central division, (laughs) like you said, you think the Blackhawks are going to finish seventh and I think they're going to finish last. I'm saying that just to do a mini hot take, just because I I mean, arguing over which team is going to finish last in a division is kind of arguing which player you would rather take in like the last pick of the seventh round of the draft or something. It's kind of pointless. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm saying this to be like 1% controversial. Gotcha. I don't think it's all that controversial, to be honest with you. I could see the Blackhawks reaching a point in the season to where they just trade away every single expiring contract they have. And it's just like, you know, if I have to take a little bit less on Patty Kane to trade them, I will. But, you know. Yeah, and plus the Blackhawks they want also lost. They want the guard. That's yeah. just it. And plus the Blackhawks also traded away to bring it. And that was a huge blow. Right on. I agree and then, well. Last but not least, the Coyotes are the Coyotes. Do we really have to go in depth at all with this one? They're playing at Arizona State University, folks. That's all we got to tell you. And I still think that they're going to finish ahead of the Blackhawks. Why? Because I just feel like saying that. That's why. Nothing ever goes according to plan in these predictions. So I'm just going to I'm just going to do this just because. And I have them finishing after the Blackhawks. Why? Well, because it's the Coyotes. Because that's the Coyotes, and that's my opinion, and that's that. <laughs> yeah, and the, and that's the Central Division. That's right.